takes like a good 30 to 45 minutes to curl this. So it's like, okay, whatever. <sighs> we'll get over it. It'll be another day. <laughs> it's a long time, eh? 40 minutes? That's like, yeah. That's a bit it's... of a playing a, a game, isn't it? <laughs> that's, that's like it one is. or two levels, <laughs> depending on. Yeah, it's like four <laughs> matches or something like that. <laughs> like, yeah, that's like a whole round of Battlefield. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So funny. Yeah. Everything's it, in perspective. Eh. It is, yeah, exactly. Hair is hair. <laughs> But so interesting, yeah, because like we don't even know what we're talking about today, but that's that's the common theme with our talks. Which oh, is we quite... do know what we're talking about today. Today we are talking about spiritual ego. Oh, the spiritual ego, man. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna be like five rounds of battlefield then. It is. is. That, this is round two. About, <laughs> yeah, hair is round two. Spiritual we're ego. Figure out round how four. not to step on too many people's spiritual toes. <laughs> <laughs> the little toesies. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, here's the thing um, is that people can take offense to anything and everything you say. I do oh, edit yeah. my episodes for those who are listening. I do. Ep I do edit what I feel is like not supportive. Like if I make because I make stupid comments all the time and I'm like, yeah, definitely editing that out. Um, yeah. Sometimes a little sexual and I'm like, oops. <laughs> didn't mean to um but that could be misconstrued um so definitely edit those ones out unless it's like goes with the episode theme or topic <laughs> but yeah. yeah i like i i think sometimes um i even overthink it with the episodes that i do edit um and i try to not do it out of fear of people's reactions or um or just out of like the eh, i don't want the shit i don't want shit for it um, if I said something that is my perspective, that's maybe unpopular, like obviously like never uh, diminishing, never like, you know, um, putting something or a group of people or, you know, something down, but, but for sharing my perspective on like, and sharing your perspective on like the spiritual ego, mm -hmm. I just feel like this is just our perspective and what is helpful keep what is unhelpful or not it doesn't land that's okay mm. let it go it's it it resonates for us it may not resonate for everyone and the point of talking <laughs> about mm -hmm, the point of talking about spiritual ego is not to trigger people it's actually for us to really illuminate what what some of the issues are that we see because i have i have a different background as everybody all my listeners know i have a christian ministry background you have a spiritual even agnostic like atheist kind of catholic even background like you have quite an interesting background which you've shared on the mm. podcast before and i think that i've seen spiritual ego in the context mostly of religion but as i've come out of religion and more into spirituality i've actually seen the same thing just in a different costume mm. and I've seen the damage, um, whether individually or like a whole platform of people of followers that are following someone in particular and just eating it up. Um, and I, I can see that and, um, and it, it makes me upset from the perspective of I take such responsibility and that's the only reason why I edit episodes or things that I say stupid out or that could be misconstrued or unsupportive is because I, I so highly value every person that is listening and their journey. And I take full responsibility. It's, it's something that I take very seriously, the content that I publish out. Mm -hmm. It, it matters to me. Um, and I don't want to do things just to do things. I don't even want to share from my perspective or my, my personal life just to share it. Um, mm. I really only share the things that I think are going to be or feel are going to be helpful. And so, yeah, I just want to start with that. I think for the listeners who are listening, that is our motive with this. And so we can start with that and go from there and have freedom in our sharing of our perspectives and our, <laughs> you know, all of that. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, I will add to that as well. And I agree with all of that. Um, and I see great value in triggers. So I guess mm -hmm. I can be a little bit different in that respect because I can see the benefit of them because I appreciate yes. my own triggers. 
Yeah. And I know that if I'm being triggered, it's an opportunity for me to figure out why I'm being triggered. Yes. Uh, yes. Instead of going on the defense, right? Instead of being like, I'm attacked, I'm attacked, because what are you being attacked by, right? You're being attacked by your own perceptions. So really think about that because what someone's saying doesn't matter ultimately. Yeah. Um, it's just literally when they're talking, I mean, it's just a vibra vibration, right? And your ears, if you break it down to the real crux of it, it's just your, your ears are picking up vibrations and transforming them into information. Well, it's already information, but it's the brain's interpreting the information. And it's going to interpret the information based on your own biases, your own perceptions. Really think about that because that means that you're getting attacked by yourself, right? Um, and triggers are a good opportunity because they can illuminate things that are dormant within us, things that you might not even know are there. In fact, you probably don't. I mean, it, that's I why did. I love triggers because I'm like, oh, thanks. I didn't know I either had I, that or still have that. Exactly. <laughs> And this, this is no different with the spiritual stuff, right? Um, if you're getting triggered by something, really look into what, what it's triggering because it's, it's, a, it's a love letter from, from a source telling you, hey, look, here's something else to, to look at and do you want to keep going this way because we're going to keep giving you the same lesson in a different flavor until you release whatever it is. That's um, great. Triggers are a love letter from the universe. They really are, you know, they really are. They're disguised as a negative polarity, right? So that's why a lot of people don't like them, myself included. I never like them. No one likes getting triggered in the matrix. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. You, it is. But when you step outside of it, like, and you can see them for what they are um, and really just change the narrative behind them and start saying that they love letters from the universe or source or God or whatever it is you want to, you know, whatever your reference is. Uh, and you can really change that narrative and, really start using these tools that are you know presented to us every day from our co-workers from our friends from our family from ourselves right from something we watch on tv or, mm -hmm. or posts we see on instagram or a youtube video we watch it's all the same we're just triggering ourselves so. but yeah so good so josh what would be your definition of spiritual ego well it, it's just my definition, I mean, this is loosely my definition. Um, it's basically create, it's, it's, it's the process of, it's the mental activity of identifying, but now we're not identifying just with the body, we're identifying with whatever thing we create. So whether it be we're a star seed, whether it be we're a, um, you know, archangel, whether it be, you know, all of these things. Shamanic healer whatever right? astrologer you could yeah. pick any anything that you identify with right exactly and if we're still identifying with things we need to understand what we're still playing with duality right um because when we label something we're labeling it something apart from something else right so that's the big thing to understand so that's still duality so it's just another hurdle to get over um but also i'm on the side of the fence where i know it is beneficial as well so i'm not saying that by all you know do I, mean, I am kind of saying do what you can to avoid attaching to these things too much but i also see the benefit in doing it because myself i experienced it right and it's and it's helped me so but yeah it's it's one of those things that can be very subtle um, even more subtle because the ego itself is subtle right the the human ego uh, when you get into the spiritual ego, it's like, wow, <laughs> it's got so many more things to identify with, but so many more things to prove its, its existence with. And it's just so hard to disprove because it's obviously the spiritual world is something a human eyes cannot see. That's really good. And that's really good. And I think too, like there's a difference between identifying and attaching to the identifier and identification, right? Like you can identify, like there's nothing wrong with saying like what you do or what you identify with. It's the attachment of like value, worth, um, purpose even. And which I know is kind of crazy to say because a lot of people would say, well, but I identify with that because it is my purpose. And that's not necessarily wrong, but where, where it can be not supportive in your journey is when you have this value, this importance 
this specialness as ACIM, which I see it in the back there, mm-hmm. the specialness factor makes it way more difficult. Now it's now it's something between you and someone or something else. Like that's the problem that it sets you up with, like for example, Christianity or any religion, but I'll use Christianity because that's where I came from. Mm-hmm. That was a barrier that I experienced that I didn't, it didn't sit well for me that I'm looking at other people going, oh, you're not a Christian, so you're a sinner, you're lost, you're this, you're that, right? Whatever the Bible, whatever I was taught. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's this separation and there's this less than, like you're gonna go to hell, I'm gonna go to heaven. And so that is spiritual ego. Like as a, for anyone who's listening that is religious, this is not like a poo-pooing on religion, it's just, it's this is the this is what spiritual ego is so like you said like there's there's benefits to this like this Mm -hmm. does benefit us in our journey and that's why i come from the perspective of your journey is sacred and it doesn't matter if you're still religious listening to this episode or you're not or you're spiritual or you're not like it doesn't really matter your journey yeah your journey is sacred and so, but, but it's great to understand where this is coming from, because I think that you can be religious, you can be spiritual, you can be an atheist, agnostic, you can be whatever you want and understand spiritual ego and be, be aware of it and be, I guess, reconciling it within yourself, no matter what your quote unquote beliefs are, you could mm. be working on the spiritual ego and dissolving that idea of duality and separation within yourself. Yeah, exactly. And it's like I said, there is, I mean, to to have a right and a wrong experience is reinforcing duality again. We've got to understand that duality is an illusion, right? It's all about, um, I mean, polarity exists within this physical universe. It's the positive and negative electronic or electric charges, right? Like a magnet. Duality on the other hand, is our perception of things yes. based on those two polarities. Yes. Um, so without us, duality does not exist, right? So if you can understand that, you can see that it's an illusion. Yeah. We have created it. We continue to create it. And the longer we perpetuate it, the longer it's going to exist. There is no right or wrong. If you, if you Like you said, no matter what religion you are in, Whatever is helping you at that particular time was meant to happen then. The spiritual ego is the same thing. I'm not going to say that it's right or wrong, right? I'm just here to relay my experience of spiritual ego and the ups and downs that it has, you know, caused me in my awakening journey um, and the hindrance it has provided, but also the growth that it has supplied as well. But there is definitely no right or wrong because, again, if we're, if we're saying there's a right or wrong experience, we're enforcing duality, which is just an illusion. Um, so nothing can exist. Uh, anything that needs us to exist is an illusion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you, because I know from my, my journey, how it benefited me was the understanding it actually for a while it re- reinforced separation between me and other people or me even in God. Um, and that idea that I'm separate because I'm a sinner. So I'm not reconciled with God and thereby I have to, you know, accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and savior. I have to try to not sin as much as I can. Um, because any time that I sin, that causes separation between me and God, but yet at the same time, Jesus paid it all. So it was very confusing. Like I always like, was like where am i like am i good with god are we good (laughs) i'm confused right now because love from god and the universe is unconditional so why are these conditions there right that's that's part of the belief system right that at least i grew up under and most most christianity and even catholicism like you experience that that there's a big separation there you have to confess every time you know yeah um but where it benefited me was it actually caused me to go on that searching journey of am i or am i not because i i'm a black and white kind of person where it's like all or nothing black and white right and wrong like i i like for me it's really hard to think in terms of the gray scale (laughs) and so i'm always like god no it's like it's either this or it's that and um 
all or nothing. So I always, yeah, all, I'm such an all or nothing. I um, definitely have a similar mindset for sure. Yeah, yeah. similar mindset, right? And I've got yes. to work with that. Yes. <laughs> and there's benefits be there and there's well. there's challenges. Yeah. <laughs> this was a challenging one because it's I'm like, mm. I'm hearing multiple messages on Sundays, like my whole life, like 28 years of of messages on a Sunday. And yes. I can't figure out if when I sin <laughs> or when I do something or say something that is technically a sin or wrong or, you know, not of God or, you know, whatever, where am I with God? Is there this separation? And I would suffer for just even the thought that I've, that God doesn't love me anymore. Even as a kid, like I actually would go up, my parents told me that I would go up like every Sunday to re re-sign up as a Christian, like rededicate my heart and my life to God, because I, I, I felt so, I was so convicted with, well, I didn't like, you know, I wasn't nice to mom. I wasn't nice to dad. And I was like four or five, you know, like, and I think it was when I was living in Colorado and I would go up every single Sunday to rededicate and re give my heart to God and all of that, because I felt so guilty over not doing, not being good, not not having good thoughts, having an attitude because I was such a strong-willed child. I got spanked a lot that week. I need to confess to God and like ask for forgiveness. I love you and I hope you love me still because I got a lot of spankings this week. Um, but I think what's really interesting is as an adult, I was an even like young adult and teenager. I'm just like, I don't understand where I stand with God. And because I'm, I'm doing the best I can, but I, I can't stop sinning. Like, and I don't understand how I keep quote unquote sinning. And yet Jesus paid it all. Then shouldn't I not have a propensity to sin? You know, like it just like it, like I never understood that. And this is a whole like other thing that we can talk about later. Um, but all this to say, it kind of led me to this journey of realizing there is absolutely no separation. And actually the idea of separation is what is causing me the suffering. Like it, my mm. experience of the spiritual ego and that idea that all this importance I was placing on my identity as being, you know, a virgin, as being um, sinless, as being perfect pastor's kid, daughter, whatever, um, even a pastor. And um, like all of that, like all of the importance that it was on being a Christian woman, like, and doing that perfectly to the T because that now it's like now to get a husband and a godly man, right. That is also in ministry. I have to have a clean slate. There can't be shit, <laughs> not a speck of shit <laughs> on, on my card, on my report card. <laughs> like I have to be perfect in order to have the right guy call in the guy, the God guy and, and make it and make babies <laughs> and do ministry with him. Right? Like all this pressure on everything I do and the value and the importance that I, that was placed on that. So that mm. really fucked me up. That fucked me over and it fucked me up. I got fucked every which way <laughs> in that situation. I'm 35 and I'm happy, <laughs> but, but <laughs> yeah. as a 20 year old, I, I mean, it was so much pressure. And then to, to try to, to try to work my way out of that was not easy. So all this to say, like, I still really highly value and treasure those um, struggles and those challenges, which with the spiritual ego in which my journey from Christianity presented me because it has allowed me to deeply, deeply resonate. Like you cannot convince me otherwise that there is no separation from God. It doesn't matter what the fuck you do, even if you put the birds up to the sky and go, fuck you, you know, in, in a moment of being really upset, there is no separation. You can, uh -huh. like, I was taught you can renounce God. There is no such thing as renouncing God. In my opinion, there's no such thing as separation from God because you are inadvertently the essence. You are actually a part of the same universe. There is no separation between you and I, um, there's only the experience, but even that experience of flipping God off is actually what can even break away the things that are separating you or causing suffering. I mean, even that moment can be a very liberating moment, you know, of sovereignty and divinity, you know, even, even stepping into that. So, and mm -hmm. your power and your authenticity. So I think when we rely on certain ideas, it can, sometimes they're disempowering, sometimes they're not. But in my experience, a lot of my ideas were 
very much disempowering. And so that's, that's where I think it benefited me. And I want to invite you, if you don't mind sharing your experience, like where did it benefit you? Where was mm. it challenging for you and your experience? Cause you have such a different background than me. Yeah, well, um, yeah, <laughs> <You're> absolutely. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like what you're saying is, yeah, that's great because, you know, ultimately you can realize that there is no separation. Mm -hmm. um, and if you were to flip God off, I mean, if my three-year-old niece flipped me off, I would be laughing, right? First and foremost, and I would just be like, I still love you. I'm not going to say, oh, how dare you? You're three years old. We don't, we're like a little... I mean, if you think about the grand time of the universe that's already happened, as far as we know, you know, um, what are we? A speck of nothingness in terms of time. So we are not even infants yet in the grand perspective. You know? yeah. And we're all equals and stuff. And we're all connected through our consciousness, right? So yes. just because my physical vessel, our magnetic spheres aren't in contact right now, we're right. still through channels of consciousness connected, right? Yes. Um, and this this connection through the internet stuff is proving that, you know, it's like as above, so below, right? Mm -hmm. To put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of my experience, yeah. So, I mean, the spiritual ego for me was, it was an interesting journey. Um, and trust me, there's still residual parts of it now. I'm not saying oh, yeah, that same. really <laughs> transcended it. Should right? have said that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Same. yeah. If anyone sort of thinks you, oh, you, you, yeah, well, that's. I have not me. arrived. <laughs> <laughs> but like you know, um, it's it. I can see it more and more. And for me, my my spiritual ego experience was very much rooted in separation, and it was the star seed experience, right? Mm. Now, I went through a stage where I was receiving massive downloads, right? Um, there's huge things that I mean I've always received them throughout my life and I've always just sort of shrugged them away right but when I started getting into the spiritual uh, practices and things like that they started to intensify uh, so when I was meditating and things like that I was receiving all of these inf information and these massive packets that I just didn't even couldn't even begin to explain them until I really sat down with them and, and worked through them and I can't even remember how I came across the the terminology of starseed, but I did somehow, right? It was all meant to yeah. be. Yeah. Uh, and I started identifying with that. It's like, yep, that's it. Because it all sounded right. You know, I was like, yeah, fuck, that's me. Kind of um, makes sense. <laughs> made a lot of sense and still does. Like I, I don't, I'm not saying that I'm not, right? But I'm just right. not presenting myself as that. And I'm not attaching to that identity. And I'm not, you know, I could quite easily do that. There's a lot of people that are it's doing easy. that. Mm -hmm. Um and I could be like, yeah, I'm from fucking all of the stuff. And, you know, it, ultimately, yeah, it's true because, but it's not just me, right? It's everybody. We're all, we're all that um, in one shape or form, because if you start saying that you're not, then you're believing and in investing in separation again. So you're just back to square one, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I went through that whole phase and I mean, it, 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 I don't look at it in a negative lens at all because it benefited me so much because it, it made me look into some things. And um, I'm just thinking about it. Like I haven't had a very vast experience with spiritual ego, if I'm honest. Um, it's just sort of that part of it. I've never, I've, I've always been very humble um, in my life experience. So I think that's transferred across quite easily for me to not really be like, uh, you know, like my truth is the only truth. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. who, who did hey. that? Hey. Um, <laughs> people say it but uh, yeah <laughs> but I mean yeah it, it sort of led me down some paths and avenues that uh, were, were highly beneficial for me um, what I might do is just go through a, a couple more examples of um, spiritual ego so that that's obviously one yeah, of them that'd be um, I, I mean we've got the channelers and things right um, the ones that and we've had this discussion on on your podcast before about how to how to handle those yes uh, with the the keyword being discernment right um so you can listen to them by all means follow them watch them absolutely you're going to get some information from them but do not place them on any form of pedestal because yeah they really anyone they, anyone. they shouldn't want to be on the pedestal for starters right because if they do then there's questions to be asked mm -hmm. of 
oh, yeah. what tensions are or, or whatever. But yeah, you shouldn't. Uh, well, sorry, I take that back. I'm not, never going to say you shouldn't do anything. I just say that it's um, maybe more beneficial if you don't, right? Mm -hmm. But also there's opportunity there if you do. So I, I don't like taking experience away, mm -hmm. as you know. Because uh, yeah. I know that everything You're has You're so good at that. I'm so like, <laughs> nope, you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. Well, it's not good. <laughs> I want to say because it's, well, it's not that I want to say that. It's my first thing is that because that's Josh jumping in, right? But then I know that, uh, hang on a minute, like that stuff is. It's that's what I need to work on. Play. I still jump in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the reaction, reaction of us, right? It's our, um, it's our body complex. It's the... Yeah. It's just the Josh or the Whitney, right? Then you've got the the thinking slow part of us, which is the con you know, the other part of us, which is like, oh, hang on a minute. Da, 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 da. Might be beneficial. Um, you don't actually know what would be beneficial for someone else versus you. Exactly. You don't. We don't. Um, for me to say that I do would be ridiculous because I do not know everybody personally and I do not know their biases, their beliefs, their, their distortions, what they do, who they are. Like for me to assume that is, is ludicrous, right? That's just a dream that I'm projecting out into the world. Um, Yep. but so channelers yeah. anyone channelers. that's like a spiritual teacher even or or they go on youtube they have a youtube channel and they're telling you what they're getting downloads for i mean it's same thing different costume really you know it, even it me. really is, it yeah. really is. Um, and these things are okay um, but maybe just make a practice of seeing the spiritual ego you know you can just see what it is yeah and just observe yeah. it like it doesn't need to mean things right it doesn't need to mean anything it just be an observing thing like we could quite easily watch our life experience like a movie but we don't because we like to get involved you know we want to do things and we want to do this that, and the other thing. we want to control the outcome and all the things that ego likes to do right um but yeah you can just be like looking at these things and taking in information that resonates with you um but in the heart center right that there's a difference between it resonating overall and resonating in the heart center um if yes. you can feel that it's usually true and it's if it's an expansive feeling uh, i would pursue it if it's a contracting one i would start thinking that it's probably rooted in illusion or something because nothing in in the creative flow or the creative frequency can ever be contracting we can see that with the universe right the way that it was created yep. was an expansive journey Everything yeah. is always expanding. Time is always going forward. You know, our perception of yeah. time is always forward going. Yeah. Um, it's never a regression. There is no such thing as a regression. Um, just the illusion of like even a black hole is not a regression. It's probably the start of something new um, in the infinite cycle that we have no idea of yet. And the human mind complex will probably never be able to comprehend it. Yeah. Um, so we can get a bit closer. But all I'm saying is if it's contracting, I would, I mean, you can explore it, but, you know, do you want to, <laughs> you know, um, but if it's expansive, it makes you feel expansive and creative and, you know, like it's just putting you full of energy and stuff like that, then yes, go with those things. Yes. Um, but if it makes you feel the opposite, just leave it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that's great. And I, I think I like to, I like to dig and go deeper of like, why am I feeling that feeling? And, but that's not always something that can serve you sometimes it's just really simple and it's just that one thing yeah it, i, I mean, can complicate is, things real easy by doing that yeah, but sometimes I, it's, I mean, it's beneficial to go deep it, it is for sure but i mean we get so caught up in the shadow work and the doing the work and, and stuff like that like just chill bro yeah you know <laughs> you what i have a i have a hard time it. with people identifying with their dark night of the soul like that yeah, actually yeah. triggers me yeah. <laughs> because yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is, Josh. I don't know what it is about it. I don't know if it's the glorification of a dark time in your life. I don't know. I don't know what about it irks me, but there's something about it that I don't, I don't resonate with, I guess. Like it just rubs me the wrong way. Not when someone's just generally talking about like a hard time that they went through. Obviously I have clients. So we talk about the dark night of the soul, but it's the identification with that dark night and well, the, oh, I go, I'm going through it again. Yeah. Just not a label. It. Like it could yeah. be anything. Like if someone has a bad day and the spiritual ego says, oh, I'm dark night of the soul again. Mate, yeah. you can't have it every day. 
<laughs> yeah. The Dark Knight of the Soul, I mean, look, again, the Dark Knight of the Soul means something different, completely different to different people, right? Yes. Um, yes. So it could be that it's just something to dig into and say look is this actually that like is it actually that bad yes and what is it is it external circumstances because if it is then that's what we need to work on yeah the, the ex external is your create it's your creative paradise yeah all right so, i don't even know where dark night of the soul even came from who came up with that concept i think there's some reference in the bible isn't there to something like that no way okay i gotta look at that I've i'm not sure i think cover there to is. cover and i don't remember a dark night of the soul but you oh, know. okay maybe not then i don't know sure i don't know where it came either. from and anyone who is listening to this please comment below help us help mm. a sister out <laughs> if you know where this came from can you please comment below um because i think too like um what what is hard is sometimes you're literally just having like an adult three-year-old fit and you're just pissed because okay. life is not working out the way it's happening right? Uh -huh. Things are not clicking, relationship just left. Like it's those life transitions. And I'm like, just, a life transition is not a dark night of the soul. Like, why are we putting such a dark label on it? It could be like a Phoenix rising moment where it's like, you know, um, you're just, you're just being lit on fire and being reborn. It's not something that is so negative And so I guess it's the, it's the heaviness around that when people talk about it, it's like, it's so dark, it's so mm -hmm. heavy. And it's like, well, how about a dark night or what you were experiencing is just simply you reconciling with what you believe about yourself, believe about the world and believe about God. And some of those things were shocking. Some of those things that you were moving through were difficult and challenging, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it, it's like a time that's marked in your history as being like, oh yeah, my dark night of the soul was here. And, you know, I don't know, there's just, I guess in spiritual ego, like I find that there's a, there's identifiers with that and there's um, value placed on that. And there's also like this badge of like, oh yeah, that was my dark night of soul. Like I have a badge mm -hmm. called dark night of the soul and I'm wearing it, <laughs> you know, yeah. I earned that motherfucker. <laughs> oh, oh, That's what God. gets me. It's the badge. It's the badge. It is. Yeah. Yeah. That's what spiritual ego is though. You know, it's just a badge. <laughs> It's a badge that people wear. Say, look at me. You know, like, they wear the stuff. Like, it's like, not, not, like see, this is where I got to be. Yeah. Cause it, it's not that, you know, you can't <laughs> wear things and do things. Like, I wear crystals and shit, right? I do. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you can just sort of see it a mile away when they're just like, fuck, you know, like, obviously that's their identity and that's okay. Right. It's not, I'm not saying it's okay. It's not dogging but, too hard. Yeah, man, it's not for me. Right. And I, I don't see any real benefit in it so um yeah. maybe if you're i feel like it's also a hang-up because <laughs> there's this thing of saying like it's it what it comes across to me as and i could be wrong is that i have this badge therefore i'm officially spiritual because i've been through this so oh. this is what makes me have value to the world i've been through a dark night so i hear a lot of teachers because i listen to a lot of podcasts too and they reference it as if it was a course that they took that they completed and they now have a certificate. It's the same thing, which I think that there is some value added there to think of life as you are completing courses, you are learning lessons, you know, like I think there's benefits to that, but it's the, so this qualifies me now to talk to you with authority. And I feel like, no, we, we all just have, we all are empowered. No matter what you experience in your life, you're not yeah. more than you were before that experience. You're not more in authority. You don't have more purpose or more of a, of, I guess, like a qualification to speak to this. This is just something you experienced and you now have this experience to reference from. Mm. That's, that's it. Yeah. We have an obsession with progression. Eh? Um, we do. We, we have this obsession with bettering ourselves all the time. And it's not like it's a bad thing, but it's when we're obsessed with it and attaching ourselves to it, it's the it can become right? detrimental. Yeah, it is because as soon as that stops, now what? Mm -hmm. Who are you now? Right. That's what you feel like when you graduate college, no? Mm -hmm. Or high school. If if you didn't go to college, I went to ministry school. I was like, what now? Exactly. <laughs> Where do I go? Who am I now without doing this? Who am I now without this, that, and X, Y, Z? And that's why identity can be dangerous. Yes. Um, 
and like, like you said in, in the beginning it's okay to I oh, it's, it's like it's okay to be identified well you know have the identity of this but attaching to it now that I'm saying that I think the that just the very identity of it yeah, is like why can't you just enjoy doing things without identifying with them you know without the your worth and your value being attached to that thing or that well, exactly person. like if you're like a doctor um and then you uh, identified heavily as a doctor and you've done your practices um i mean think of the movie doctor strange right he's a he's a surgeon he's a hand surgeon and then all of a sudden it's all taken away from him and it's out of his control he had a car crash right yeah. um so as soon as that occurs now what now you're left with you know the loss of identity um because you've built your very worth as you said and everything around that um instead of just enjoying it and loving what you're doing every day without that part of it it is possible to do that believe it or not mm -hmm. uh, for those listening that may think that's impossible it is a, it's actually very possible to do that um it, it just takes a little bit of awareness and desire to get it because as soon as we sort of say oh i can't do that then all of a sudden we're creating that reality without even realizing it just by saying the words we can't do that um so be very very aware of your beliefs right because if you believe something enough it's going to happen any kind uh, of limitation yeah yeah exactly I and mean, that's what we do to ourselves all the time mm -hmm. so we're, we're we're in this constant battle like we want to progress and then we limit ourselves so how are you supposed to get anywhere like that like seriously it's like inching right. a car forward and backwards and even reversing exactly. in traffic it's like Ooh. yeah when you could just sit in the car and, and enjoy what's happening right now and maybe it goes forward maybe it goes back why does the position of the car matter that much? Just be in the car enjoying it. Mm -hmm. That's ultimately what we're here to learn, I think, is just to just to be okay with what is happening. Chaos. Like, I mean, I do subscribe to the progress thing as well. Like Earth is a school, like Dolores Cannon talks about and all of that right. stuff. I do, right. I do, I do believe that because I think the school is to get us to a place where we do not care anymore about this that shit. Right. It's to get us to a place where we can just be uh in the present moment completely right and i don't think anyone's ever experienced complete true presence um except maybe the ascended masters and things like that like people would like to say that they have of course and to them probably they have but there's always more presence there's more expansive presence to to accomplish and want accomplish to experience right yes. um i remember my first taste of the experience of presence it was amazing right it was after reading Eckhart Tolle's book power of now um before that, I wasn't even aware of it, you know, yeah. uh, until he sort of, his words, well, my interpretation of his words made me understand uh, a few things, right? Mm -hmm. um, and just knowing it was there and the first taste of it was amazing. And I've, you know, progressively had more and more tastes of presence. Um, and it all comes from the heart center. That's mm -hmm. for sure. You can clear the heart center and sit in that heart center. Like even if you do it in the morning for like 10 uh just breathe into the heart center and visualize the heart center getting bigger and bigger get into your heart space as much as you can oh yeah i don't think there's much more to life than that to be honest with you just i honestly don't think so center. and i i think everything we do comes from that space yeah. and even where we speak from and if you're not tuned in if you're not tapped in and connected to that i think you find yourself being more disempowered inauthentic um disconnected it's but i love like john wineland i don't know how much because i don't even know if you and i have talked offline about john wineland i have been binging john wineland oh my god i need to send you things um i have so much to send you <laughs> um but he I stay away from things now, eh? i sort of just like you're uh, a little yeah. nomadic hermit and i'm gonna open up your world a little bit <laughs> I, um, <laughs> let yeah, your turtle like, head come out of that shell a little bit <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, like, i'm just like well i mean do i really need the distortions you know like do i need somebody else's opinions but i'm always open to listening to things that's what i'm well, saying what, I'm saying what i like that, about him is it would resonate with you because mm -hmm. he's so open it's not like this is the way of things um mm -hmm but he talks exactly what you just said is exactly what he teaches on uh one day i will have him on my podcast um but he talks about that of getting into your heart center and and from that core space that is where you where you even have desire 
right? Desire for things without an expectation of how that desire is going to be met. Mm. And I think that's something that is like, that has changed a lot for me in, in just even the past like month of, since I got exposed to him first, practicing that of getting into my heart space, filling that up, you know, um, even Joe Dispenza, like the whole visualization, right. And visualizing that, whatever that is and having such gratitude, um, and coming from a place of believing like it's already happened because technically it already has, um, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, just exactly. in a def- I mean, different field. Hmm. You love the quantum. Oh and yeah. We're edging on the edge of, of quantum right now. And I might just hmm. like send you off, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <I laughs> send do. you off on the quantum I do love it because I've always been fascinated with it. Uh, yeah. for a very long time right mm-hmm. so not just my awakening journey like beforehand quantum yeah. physics has always fascinated me um and everything mm, i hesitate to say matches up but it's very you can you can kind of explain it with quantum physics put it that way like all of the stuff like the quantum field and infinite possibilities and the fact that matter is in all states uh simultaneously and you know all that sort of stuff mm-hmm. it's ridiculous and like the Schrodinger's cat experiment, right? Where he puts the cat in the box and it's simultaneously alive and dead at the same time until it's our observation, which changes that reality, right? So if you can understand that, um, you know, even on a slightly deep level, you can start seeing that your observation of reality is literally the only thing that matters to you Um, because, and that can be, and it's all about how you see things as well. So like, like you were talking about, you know, creating the thing that's already existing in the quantum field of potential, right? Which is exactly correct. Because if you think about it, um, the present moment is sort of changing the future, right? But it's also changing the past. If you can sort of wrap your head around that, I know it's a bit hard to understand that, but if you sit somewhere like for me now, if I, was to click my fingers i've now changed the past right Mm. as well because now in the past there's a clicking of the fingers um, but also i changed the future because my intention changed it right so that part of it that was laying in potential in the quantum field and within my mind matrix and then i made it a reality like that can seem simple right but that can be transferred out to a lot of things the Mm. thing is with the with with the the matrix is you're working with other people's quantum fields as well right so it's not like you can just go out and like the law of attraction teaches oh think of the car and you'll get the car it's like well you need other things around you to to produce that result as well right so if you ever get disheartened about your creation not happening or it's like oh it's all bullshit um i mean the secret (laughs) if i'm honest was a bit bullshit (laughs) Uh, but hey it's cool though right everything has its benefits as i always say um but yeah just realizing that you can create things um with your intentions uh, and actions um but you are up against other people's uh, realities as well but everything that you can think of is now existing and potential in the quantum field um and uh, yeah if you Act now, like Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about, like you already are that. Um, so let's say, I like to use the analogy of the Olympic swimmer, right? So if you today decided, me, you imagine me an Olympic swimmer. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so if I was like, okay, I'm going to be an Olympic swimmer, right? So now I am one. I'm just going to pretend like I'm one. So what do I do now? I'm going to do the things that an Olympic swimmer would do, right? So I'm going to train. I'm going to eat. I'm going to do it because you can't just say you are and then not do the things that this person would do, right? So you need to do both of those. Uh, So, okay, cool. And I'm going to do them. So if I do that for three months, I'm going to be a hell of a lot closer to being an Olympic swimmer than I was by not doing that. You see? Mm -hmm. So that's basically what it is. And if you do it enough, you're going to become that. Like the piano thing, you you heard Dr. Joe's been talking about the piano thing, just thinking about doing the piano strokes. I mean, how amazing is that? And all of a sudden, they know how to play the piano. Never played the yeah. piano in their life. They just imagined yeah. that they had. Yep. Quite impressive. It's so impressive. Like, it's amazing. We're it's amazing like just, things. We are. And the, the power of our minds and our beliefs and our perceptions about 
reality and ourselves. I mean, it, it all matters. So that's why even we're having this conversation on spiritual ego, because it matters what you believe and it matters what you think. And it matters what you ruminate on and what you focus on and what you place importance or specialness on, because that determines then what your experience is going to be and whether you want to enjoy something that is supportive and or challenging, you know, which both in cardology, I always mention this anytime I mention cardology, one of my favorite aspects of cardology's perspective on karma is that both supportive karma or positive karma, challenging karma or negative karma, both are supportive. Both help you in some way. It's just one is more challenging and more rough of an experience. And the other one is a little bit more ease and flow and it doesn't feel like so hard to, to work through. So I think yeah, I think that's the main reason why it's like the spiritual ego um, can cause limitation in your life, right? You can experience limitation. You can experience suffering from that. I did. Um, you can also benefit from it where it really illuminates what resonates for you, what, what ends up being true for you or uh, supportive for you. So for me, that was realizing that... Um, this this idea this belief system that i'm in does not actually support me in my connecting with god and in me also doing what i want to be doing what i'm passionate about and the work that i do it doesn't support it because ultimately my connection with god is always dependent on what i do say and think mm -hmm. it doesn't yeah. it's not just consistently true it's which not is, absolute. Is it's yeah. absolutely, it's always, you are always connected to God or whatever yes. you choose to call it. Um, and from my perspective, we are that too. So um, we're just fragments of it. Um, yes. Fractals. Expressions. It. Yep. Yes. Just unique expressions, relaying information back to creator um, mm -hmm. of experience, right? There's nothing more valuable than experience. And it seems that way because it's true. Like our, our experience seems to be very valuable uh, and precious and there's a reason for that right it's crucial to whatever's happening outside of this um, dream dream world that we're in um and yet yeah, spiritual ego is one of those things i mean it just reinforces separation right so ultimately you want to get away from separation because when there is no separation there's no more fear right yeah. there's no more us versus them we've experienced separation for too long um you know we've been separated uh we've been put into camps into tribes right versus left <clears throat> black versus white um you know it's been going on for years centuries even longer perhaps um yep you know we need to stop it we do and if we're going to get anywhere that's one of the first things that needs to happen uh, as a, as an overall global society is the dropping of races and borders and all that crap right um, yes. So I think we're a bit off that yet. May I mean, it can happen. Um, you know, there can be a, a catalyst which creates that change for sure. I'm not going to rule that out. But um, the reason I'm saying that is giving you a, an idea of that separation and what damage it can cause, right? Um, and trust me, that's happening within your own consciousness as well. So you really want to put all the pieces together, the spiritual ego, the ego, the this, the that, and just realize that they're all the same thing. Um, you know, they're all part of you. They're all part of your consciousness because you're experiencing them. So how are they just really think about it? How are they disconnected from me? How are they separate? How, how is the universe out here? What I'm seeing separate from me? Like there's really no way you can answer that question. Uh, and I don't think it's explored enough because if you can't just say oh i'm you know i'm part of the universe unity and all of that maybe if you're wired like i was wired and still am i really like to explore how things work and you know and mm -hmm. sometimes asking the negative part of the question and i'm not saying negative is bad i'm saying the other polarity the negative version of that question is okay 
how as how am I separated from this? To really think about and, and prove to yourself that you're separate. I bet you can't. Mm-hmm. Because how how could you be? Because your interpretation of this world is created within your mind. Right. Uh, and you're the very photons that create this illusion or mirage of the world that we all collectively see. It's like a controlled collective hallucination. We all agree loosely on what we're seeing, but there's always going to be differences. Um, so just think about that. The photons that are hitting your eyes and creating this, you know, lights reflecting off and bouncing into your corneas and doing all that shit. That's all connected to you, right? Is it not? <laughs> like okay. you are not separate from anything. I know the illusion is there that you are, that we are, um, but we're not. We are all together. We're all connected via consciousness. We're all connected outside of this. We're all the same thing. Uh, And that's what the law of one talks about time and time again, right? Look into other selves, see the creator. And when they say that, they're saying, see yourself because you are creator. But you must first see creator within yourself to see it anywhere else. As yes. simple as that. Yes. So that's why the three steps are gaze, you know, into the mirror, see creator, and gaze to other self, see the creator. Mm-hmm. Uh, know yourself, accept yourself, become the creator. It is simple. You are that, what you are looking for. Mm-hmm. That's all you need to know. Everything that you are looking for, you are it. Think of the alchemist, yeah. right? Think of all of the books that refer to it. Even Jesus or Jeshua talked about it, right? Mm -hmm. Even he knew that the treasure was within him. Yep. Uh, It is. It's simple. I know it seems hard, right? But it is actually quite simple. You are what you're looking for. Stop looking for you in other people. Stop looking. And when I say other people, I mean the illusion of other people you create, like the potential in a partner, this to that, this to that. Stop looking for yourself in that. Find yourself first, then project that through and see other as self and then operate from the heart space. I don't think you need to do anything more than that. Mm -mm. What else? Literally, I think the remedy to spiritual ego, like if you know, like if this is resonating with you and you're like, oh God, like how do I, how do I work this out though? Like, I know I have this, I'm seeing it as y'all are talking. How do I work this out? I literally think that you just laid out the remedy. You are it. You don't need to be anything else other than yourself. You don't need anything else, any badges, any certificates. To do I mean, or be who you are. are just illusions anyway, right? A badge, a piece of paper. How long is that going to last? Is that going to last forever? Of course not finite thing so stop attaching everything to these finite sources that can just be taken away from you yeah you're no more special being a star seed or just being a plain old human in this life you don't need to identify as anything else outside of what you literally just are right now you don't need it now if you identify and there's some sort of affinity towards it i have a thing for the stars but you don't need that in order to be valuable worthy spiritual complete whole connected intuitive right psychic even tool like anything else you don't need anything